Welcome back to Marvelous Videos. I'm Rylan, and today we will be exploring the origins of the Shadow. Who knows what evil lurks in the hearts of men? <laughs> the Shadow knows. Well, the first appearance of the Shadow is as mysterious as this quote of his, as is the character himself. On July 31st, 1930, a discreet narrator of a radio program called Detective Story Hour introduced himself as The Shadow in a sinister voice. As the character gained popularity, a publication named Street and Smith hired Walter B. Gibson to create a character that matches the narrator's name and voice. His first appearance on print media came on April 1st, 1931 in the story named The Living Shadow. The Shadow Knows. <laughs> As a character, the Shadow is a master of disguise, an expert gunslinger, and he also possesses powers like telekinesis and hypnosis. He uses disguises to fight crime and criminals in and around New York while taking help from several sidekicks. Boss, you okay? The Cobalt Club. He was born as Kent Allard and went on to become a remarkable Air Force pilot during World War I. By a happy mistake, he crash-landed in the jungles of South America, where he found a city of gold and made a fortune for himself. After learning several ancient skills from a master, he faked his death and started to assume identities of other men, the most significant of which being a man named Lamont Cranston. Furthermore, he has the hypnotic ability to make himself completely invisible to other people by altering their thoughts and perceptions. He's a skilled marksman and a martial artist with the most advanced physique and physical strength, and he is basically in the best shape humanly possible. Apart from using his mind and his body for hunting down criminals, he uses a pistol and a Thompson 42 submachine gun. In 1994, Alec Baldwin starred in The Shadow as its main protagonist. Before we go deeper into today's analysis, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small step for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thanks! Now, on with the video. Blue Coal presents The Shadow, a man of mystery who strikes terror in the very souls of sharpsters, lawbreakers, and criminals. The Shadow started out as a radio program. In 1930, Street and Smith Publications decided to adapt the then-famous Detective Story magazine to a radio format. It was then felt that since detective stories revolve largely around mystery and suspense, a mysterious storyteller should introduce the radio program. The name given to this mysterious storyteller was The Shadow, a suggestion that came from a young scriptwriter named Harry Charlotte. The Shadow went on air for the first time on July 31st, 1930, and hosted the Detective Story Hour, where he narrated, Blue Cole presents The Shadow. A man of mystery who strikes terror in the very souls of sharpsters, lawbreakers, and criminals. At first, it was narrated by James Licurdo, but The Shadow became a national sensation when Frank Reddick Jr. took the reins. His voice quality was hauntingly wheezy and sibilant, a quality that thrilled his listeners. The Shadow also hosted segments like The Blue Coal Radio Review and Love Story Hour. Although The Shadow went off the air for a brief period, he came back with his own radio drama on September 26, 1937. Interestingly, the character of Margot Lane was also introduced in this radio drama, a character that Penelope Ann Miller later portrayed in the 1994 film. I'll show you my instincts. <laughs> the Shadow Illuminating the Print Media Just like several of his contemporary superheroes like The Phantom, The Shadow started his comic career through a syndicated daily newspaper comic strip. He made his first appearance on July 17, 1931, in a comic strip by The Ledger Syndicate, with stories adapted from the shadow pulps. The comics, however, had to be cancelled in 1942, when there was a shortage of space in newspaper owing to war news. But fortunately, in 1988 and 1999, the shadow dailies were collected and published into two comic book series. The Shadow regained some of its popularity following the war. 
However, during the superhero revival witnessed in the 1960s, Archie Comics published The Shadow, an eight-issue comic series. In the 1970s, DC Comics published the character. Furthermore, The Shadow appeared in Batman issue number 253 as well as 259. In issue 253, Batman seeks the Shadow's help and calls the Shadow his greatest inspiration. While in the latter comic, it is revealed that the Shadow had once saved Batman's life when he was just a boy. In 1988, Marvel Comics published a graphic novel named The Shadow, 1941, Hitler's Astrologer. Uh, Yingo, I surrender. You're finished, Khan. In 1989, DC Comics 2 released a graphic novel named The Private Files of the Shadow, which was essentially a re-release of the previously printed issues. In the 90s, Dark Horse Comics also published a few of the Shadow comics, including a crossover between the Shadow and Doc Savage in 1995. In 2011, Dynamite Entertainment gained the Shadow's license and developed a comic series written by Garth Ennis. This one was set in the Shadow's original timeline of the 1930s. In 2012, Dynamite Entertainment once again published The Shadow, in which he teamed up with other Dynamite superheroes, including the Green Hornet, the Spider, Zorro, and many others. In 2015, Atlas Press published the novel The Sinister Shadow, written by Will Murray, who used some of the unpublished stories by Lester Dent. The story revolves around a conflict between Doc Savage and the Shadow during a crime wave in 1933. You're not going to pay any attention to these reports. We will. We can bring Gotham back. The Shadow and Batman Batman first encountered the Shadow as a little boy when he goes to the bank with his parents and the place is ambushed by robbers. The Shadow quickly thwarted the robbery in a violent manner. Later, Batman met an elderly Shadow, where Batman revealed to the Shadow how he was one of Batman's greatest inspirations. The Shadow simply responded by saying that the Shadow knows. If you wish for us to explore the details of this comic, please let us know in the comments and we will be happy to oblige. The, we will meet again. the Shadow Origin Kent Allard served as a spy during the First World War. He was a famous aviator who crashed in the jungles of South America and made a fortune by discovering gold in the region. After returning to New York, he assumed a new identity because he bore striking resemblance to a man named Lamont Cranston. Kent assumed Cranston's identity without the latter's knowledge and used it in his adventures and travels around the world. You will give me no further thought. Are you drunk? However, the two finally met one day, and Kent Allard threatens Lamont Cranston, saying that Kent had arranged for switching the signatures on several important documents that would enable Kent to permanently assume Cranston's identity. But this could be averted if Cranston willingly allowed Kent to let him use the former's identity when traveling abroad. Naturally, Cranston was horrified by what he just learned and obliged with Kent Allard's request, or rather, threat. The more significant contributing factor was Cranston's wish to maintain a safe distance from Allard. Kent took the help of several associates, like Harry Vincent, whose life Kent once saved. Among others were Mo Shrevnitz, who was a cab driver, and Burbank, who was a radio operator. There were a few other people as well, but they were so discreet that only Kent Allard knew who they were. What was the ring used by the Shadow? Among other weapons, the Shadow used a mysterious ring. People often wonder what its purpose and powers are. The ring is actually a beacon that helps him connect with the people he works with. It lights up whenever there's a particular situation that needs the Shadow's intervention. Furthermore, it also has the power to hypnotize people. I alone know, for I am in the Shadow. Live Action Adaptations Shadow Film Shorts, 1931-1932 As we already know, The Shadow narrated the then-famous Detective Story Hour. In 1931, Universal Pictures decided to create a series of six short films based on the same stories. The first short film, entitled A Burglar to the Rescue, had the voice of Frank Reddick. So, if someone used to listen to the radio program and then the audio of this short film, they would have a difficult time differentiating 
between the two, especially because the voice in the show was a facsimile of the one from the radio program. However, none of the voice recordings of the radio program exist today. While the first short film was filmed in New York, the next one was shot in Hollywood. Drop that gun. Leave that paper in this house. The Shadow Strikes, 1937. Released in 1937, The Shadow Strikes starred Rod LaRock in the titular role. The story revolves around Lamont Cranston, assuming the identity of the Shadow, to thwart a robbery at the office of an attorney. It was released by Grand National Pictures and did fairly well when compared to the other short films. Of hearing Honest John in person. You mean I was on the air? You were, John, and thank you. International Crime. 1938. International Crime was a sequel to the 1937 film The Shadow Strikes. Rod LaRock reprised his role from the previous film, but in this one, he was a reporter, a novice detective, and criminologist who used the title of The Shadow as a gimmick. The Shadow, 1940. The 1940s The Shadow was a 15-part film serial that Columbia Pictures produced, starring Victor Joy in the titular role. In the film, the antagonist, named the Black Tiger, sabotaged several rail lines and factories across the length and breadth of the United States. It is now up to Lamont Cranston to unmask the criminal mastermind and hit the brakes on his sinister plans. Jory wore a black suit and cape, apart from a black bandana that helped him conceal his alter ego. Apart from these, Monogram Pictures released three B-movies based on The Shadow in 1946 and in 1958, respectively, and a theatrical feature entitled The Invisible Avenger. You don't scare me! You son of a... <laughs> the Shadow, 1994. After the First World War, Lamont Cranston gave in to his dark desires and instincts to set himself up as an opium kingpin and warlord under the name of Yin Ko, which meant Dark Eagle in a dialect of Mandarin. However, servants of a holy man with otherworldly powers named Tolku abducted Cranston and presented him to the Tolku. He offered Cranston a chance at redemption by becoming a force that fights for the good in the world. You will be redeemed because I will teach you to use your black shadow to fight evil. Cranston initially refused the offer, but ultimately gets silenced by a sentient mystical dagger called Furba. Following this, he remained a student under the guidance of Talku for the next seven years. He learnt several lessons, including hypnotism, mind reading, bending the perception of other people so that he literally becomes invisible to them, except for his shadow. Years later, he returned to New York and assumed his former life as a wealthy playboy. Do you smell Batman? However, he's secretly operated as The Shadow and terrorized New York's underworld and crime networks. To help him with his objective of fighting crime and criminals, he recruited several people as his agents, whom he had earlier saved from criminals. His secret identity was safe for quite some time, only to be threatened upon crossing paths with Margot Lane, a woman with telepathic abilities. Meanwhile, Shi Wan Khan wakes up in a sarcophagus that once held his ancestor, the great Genghis Khan. Shi Wan Khan wanted to walk on Genghis Khan's path and wished to achieve the goal of world domination. Shi Wan was also a crude murderer and Talku's rogue protege, who was far more powerful and able than even Cranston. He displayed his talents for the first time by making a guard shoot himself when the latter refused to join Shi Wan's army. Despite holding the upper hand in terms of power over Cranston, Shi Wan knew that only Cranston could pose a threat to his plans so he offered Cranston a place by his side. Nonetheless, Cranston refused. Later, Cranston retrieved a coin from Shiwan Khan that was made of bronzonium, an element that could, in theory, facilitate an atomic explosion. Meanwhile, Margot Lane's father, Reinhardt, was missing. Reinhardt was a scientist, working on an atomic device for the government. Naturally, Shiwan Khan needed Reinhardt, to finish manufacturing his personal atomic bomb. Khan tried to use Margot as a pawn to kill the Shadow. He hypnotized her and ordered her to kill the Shadow, but she landed up at Cranston's house instead. Although Cranston managed to break her out of the hypnosis, she realized that Cranston was in fact the Shadow. <laughs> to 
make things worse, Reinhardt's assistant, Farley Claymore, sided with Shiwan Khan. Learning about this, Cranston then managed to learn Shiwan Khan's location. Interestingly, it was a luxurious hotel called the Monolith that Shiwan Khan had successfully hidden from the rest of the world by making them forget about it, causing it to be invisible to the naked eye. Cranston knew that Reinhardt must have finished making the bomb under Shiwan Khan's hypnosis. Naturally, he entered the Hotel Monolith for one final battle with Shiwan Khan. Claymore attempted to kill Shiwan Khan, but Cranston hypnotized him and made him jump to his death out of the balcony. However, Cranston was soon subdued by the mystical sentient dagger, the Furba. He realized that only a peaceful and calm mind could control it. After comprehending how to successfully control the dagger, he hurled it at Khan's torso, which broke his hypnotic control over the building. Indeed, the building was now visible to everyone. Khan attempted to escape and Cranston followed, while Margot and her father, who had now stepped out of his hypnosis, tried to disarm the bomb. Cranston subdued Khan by using his telekinetic powers to hurl a glass shard at his frontal lobe. Khan later ends up in a psychiatric hospital, with all his abilities gone. Margot and Cranston later embark on a serious romantic relationship and join hands to fight crime. Unsuccessful Attempts TV Series In 1954, Tom Helmore was cast as Lamont Cranston, but it didn't see the light of day. There was another attempt made in 1958. The show was to be called The Invisible Avenger, with Richard Dare starring as The Shadow. Due to some unavoidable circumstances, they couldn't finish the production, and the first two episodes of the show were compiled and aired theatrically instead. It was re-released in 1962, with some more footage added. You won't like what you see. Dad, in my head whenever I was near you, I knew it. Sam Raimi's unmade shadow feature film. It was reported in 2006 that Sam Raimi and Michael Uslan would produce a new film starring the shadow for Columbia Pictures. The script was rumored to have been written by Sivash Farahani, and it was also to feature some other pulp superheroes of Street and Smith, like Doc Savage, The Avenger, and more. In 2007, Sam Raimi told the media that his company had obtained the rights to the Shadow and were working on a story that would do justice to the character. But five years later, in 2012, Sam said that the project had to be cancelled because of the lack of a workable script. None of these films succeeded in making the Shadow a popular superhero of contemporary times. Despite that, he was a classic superhero, popular in the 1930s as well as in the 90s, enjoying a niche audience and viewership. Without a doubt, while creating Batman, Bob Kane and Bill Finger were inspired by this rich man who was a master of stealth and disguise. The Shadow has also left his shadow in Disney's Darkwing Duck as Warner Brothers V from the film V for Vendetta. If you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to send a like and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Have a good one, and be safe. Crime does not pay. The shadow knows. <laughs>